Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today's video is another antique store walkthrough. I'm so excited. Um, this one actually had a lot more of like my style of things and I actually seen a lot more um, things that I already own in this store. Um, but it was two stories in this barn. It's very cute at the very like opening um just going in here they had these i think this is supposed to be like two people cuddling on the bench but it's made with like rope and stuff it's really cute like kind of folk art i guess you'd say and they had a few more pieces like that too i think this one is made from like scrap metal and it's supposed to be an owl i think at least that's what it looked like um to me they had this like old toboggan in the back there that just briefly panned over but um it was very exciting I didn't end up buying anything today. We just bought one thing um, for John's dad, but they did have a lot of like my style stuff. A lot of, a lot more like mid-century-esque type stuff than if you watched the last one, um, it was antiques in an old church, which had a lot more like late 1800s, early 1900s, but I can link that video below if you haven't seen that one. This store had a ton of stuff in it though, so I definitely probably didn't show all of it and I just kind of panned over a lot of areas because, you know, it's already like a half hour long and that was with me not showing everything. They had these really cute um, children's books there near the front and then I saw this um, <laughs> this book I'm still not entirely sure I understand it, but it was called a legal stamp book, and I thought that was interesting. So when I opened it up, there's just all of these exact same stamps in it, um, but they're not like mailing, like postage stamps, which is what I thought. So I was looking at it for a long time trying to figure it out. But I think this is from a department store, and if you paid in cash, which I guess another form of payment then would have been paying with uh checks i guess um they rewarded you so from what i gather the entire book filled with stamps got you two dollars and fifty cents off in this department store um they had a bunch of old tins up there on the very top of the shelf along with a ton of really old books which i didn't really look at too closely i did see these comics it was a bunch of Disney ones in there. I thought there might be all Archie comics, but when I started flipping through, I noticed there was a bunch of Disney and there was like some Woody Woodpecker and just cute. I thought that one was cute. It talked about not littering, which I think is funny and very relevant for today. And then we saw these old Star Wars collector's magazines. I didn't think that they would actually be like from the 70s, but it turned out that they actually were. And then I found this weird one, which was like a weird um, Star Trek Muppets crossover. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that was about, but kind of cool. And then right next to that, I did notice that I recognized the bottom part there. I did notice they had some vintage life magazines from the 50s, which I love. I have quite a few already. I just posted a video um, doing a flip through of one. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat. Um, John ended up, they had the prices on the inside. I'm pretty sure it was $8 a piece, which I think is comparable to i think i have six and i think they were like two for 15 when i bought them and that was back in 2017 i didn't end up getting one i was thinking about it but i just didn't end up i thought if it was a cool cover like if it maybe it had like a celebrity on it or something or if it was like a one during the christmas season i was thinking i might get it i do have one um from December in the 1950s with Christmas ads in it so maybe I'll do a flip through in December when it's closer to Christmas but I love looking at the Christmas ads it's so much fun I loved this green punch bowl with the little green glasses I noticed these martini glasses I have these same glasses but they're in a green glass they're so pretty I do really like the smoke color as well And then I noticed some butterfly gold down there in the Corel and Pyrex, um, which I got kind of excited about. And then this is the point when I realized there was a bee. I could hear this buzzing and 
realized there was a bee. I'm allergic to bee stings, so I was <laughs> super, like, frightened. So I, I was very distracted from this point on because I was trying to keep an eye on where the bee was <laughs> so he wouldn't come and sting me. Now, they did have a lot of um, cool, like, I mid-century pieces. I saw these vintage Tupperware um, measuring cups. Um, I was hoping they were going to have more Pyrex than they did, but they did have some Pyrex, which was cool. I have these um, little gingerbread men um shakers but mine are made from like glass those ones are plastic i love these pyrex glasses this is the first time i've seen them in an antique store or a thrift store we had them in my thrift store that i used to work at but they some of them were broke and i think my boss ended up just like throwing them all away even though i begged him not to but he had a weird thing where he never wanted to sell anything that was like broken or damaged in any way but i was I'd always try to explain to him that like it doesn't matter about vintage things because people would buy them anyway but so I don't know he ended he would end up giving me a lot of things for free so I guess it worked out to um, my advantage but I tried so many times to explain that vintage collectors don't really care if things might not be perfect in fact a lot of people look for those types of things because they can get it cheaper I did notice that they had some Jada uh, dishes, which I honestly wish that I would have started collecting Jada a long time ago before it became insanely expensive. But like, I think the glasses were $28 each. I noticed that they had my blender there and then I noticed this avocado blender and behind it, which is even cooler than the other one, which would also really match my kitchen. But I think it was like $38 or something, which I didn't really feel like spending that on a new blender when the one I have is fine. Just sort of trying to give you like a little overview while still keeping my eye on where that bee was. They had one of those electric warmers there that was really cool looking with the three circles. It gave me very 1960s vibes. They had some cute um, cookie jars too. I noticed they had the Mr. Peanut one there. My grandma actually had, um, I saw another thing that I had, this elephant glass. It's like a child's glass. I think I actually have it for sale in my Etsy shop. But um, those little like chef people, my grandma had uh, one of those that she used to keep her utensils in. So that took me back. And then I noticed the Aladdin thermos back there. These are good sellers for us, but um, they were asking like what we would ask for it. So we wouldn't be able to resell it for profit, but they're, they're like my favorite. At this point, I noticed that the bee had followed us over and was now at the window next to us. So I was very distracted um, by that. Um, but then I noticed this, like, Disney Peter Pan glass, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure how old that would be. It was pretty tight quarters in here, and it was also, um, there was quite a few people in here as well. So I, um, like, it, the footage I feel is a little bit choppy because I kept, like, starting and stopping just to avoid filming other people. John noticed this JFK plate, uh, like, collector's plate there. They had a lot of, like, art and photos and stuff. I really liked these two. And then there was one I noticed that I really liked, um, but it ended up being, like, all of the paintings and stuff were 50% off, I think. Um... But this one ended up being like a hundred dollars because it was from the early 1900s which i didn't think it was that old so we just passed on that i noticed this sugar and salt and pepper shaker set and i'm pretty sure it's gemco but i couldn't um i couldn't like make out if it did say gemco on the bottom but i know i have some other ones that are very similar shape and then I noticed that the railings were made out of, like, trees. And then I noticed this person, and then I felt really bad for filming, and then I realized that's not a person, that's a mannequin, but it still scared me a lot. <laughs> um, and then they had this little section with some vintage cameras. I have quite a few vintage cameras, but I didn't see any there that, like, really stood out to me that were different than ones that I already have. And then I also noticed some vintage coffee makers kind of 
neat looking. Just kind of see the evolution of coffee. And then I noticed this chip bowl that I didn't notice from the other side that I thought was cool. And they had some Blue Mountain pottery pieces up top there. I don't think I need any more. I think I'm happy with what I have. But then they did have some Christmas things, which got me a little excited. I was hoping that they might have some flocked ornaments, but I didn't see any. This guy was like, I don't know, a wannabe flocked ornament. <laughs> They did have a lot of candles for the window, but I definitely have enough of those. But I did notice this light up wreath, which I really, really liked a lot. I couldn't find a price and I didn't feel like trying to move anything. Um, just in case I broke something, I was still on edge because of the bee. This angel um, ended up looking a little bit frightening to me. <laughs> um, but it did look fairly old, like maybe 1960s, maybe 70s. But it kind of was a little creepy to me. Um, and then I did notice that I'm not really sure. Like there was this part that was hanging off of it. But that kind of gave me some 70s vibes. And then I noticed another wreath that I really love. Um, I had actually seen this exact wreath at the antique store that I filmed like at Christmas time. I can link that below. It's one of my most popular Christmas videos, I think, but they had that same one there and I loved it. So also we couldn't find a price on that either. And then the other side of the store, it had a bunch of purses, but I don't think these were vintage purses. Like it didn't look like it to me. I think they, I don't know. I don't, so I don't know if the whole store was antiques, um, but then they had a lot of different photo frames from various um, decades, I guess. This We think this is like an old Hollywood star, but I'm not sure who, <laughs> or at least that's what it looks like to us. Um, but yeah, they had a bunch of different frames, which I think is neat. If I ever like need a frame or something, that I would definitely come back here. Um, and then I realized that there's this whole upstairs that you could actually use. I thought it was probably just storage, but... So I started to walk up and I was uh, once again admiring the railings that were made from the trees, which I just think is cool. I've never seen that before. And then halfway up, well, while I was admiring them, I realized that the, the handle I was holding on to, like the railing, was actually made of a tree as well, which I thought was really neat. I wasn't really expecting it, but the upstairs also had a ton of stuff, which was really neat. There was a lot of really cool pieces up here too, um, as well as downstairs, but. The one thing I will say about the store is it was really dim, um, and especially up here. So I felt like certain parts that I was filming weren't coming out that well. So I either cut them out or didn't film. Um, but I did notice these vintage fondue plates um, that I have. I have these as well. This is the first time I've seen them outside of when I bought them. But they're very, like, 70s, which I keep saying this, but someday I'm going to use my vintage fondue pot and, like, make a video. Because I even have, like, the cool vintage plates and stuff. So it'd be cool. They had a lot of globes up there. They had this really cool um, macrame-ish type owl that I thought was neat it's not actually macrame but you know what I mean that was handmade in the 70s but then they did actually have uh, macrame in behind it So they were having a 50% off clothing sale. I did notice they had a bunch of hats there, which I didn't really do a good look at. Um, John noticed in the corner, they just had a bunch of clothing. So since we resell clothing, he wanted to look over there. Um, and then I was asking him like if it was actually vintage clothing and he said some of it was. Um, 
but I didn't end up looking because it was really kind of dark over in that corner. We didn't end up buying anything either. Um, John said this dress was, it said it was from the 40s, I think. I don't know. Nothing was like standing out as like worthy of showing, I guess, is <laughs> how I felt at the time. But I did notice they had some vintage luggage underneath the clothing. Um, it's like my dream to get some vintage Samsonite luggage. Um, but I have not been successful yet. So I feel like I probably have to buy some like from eBay. Although now that we're visiting a lot more antique stores, it could happen. I also did notice like this piece of round luggage, which I want a piece of round luggage really bad. It just screams 1960s to me. This one was not in the greatest shape, but it was still cool to see. I also really, really want a vintage Samsonite train case. I look at them all the time on Etsy and eBay. Um, I probably will just end up buying one sometime, but I love them so much. Maybe if we come back to this store, I'll make a point to go through all of the clothing. I just felt like if I tried to do that and film it, it would just end up taking up a huge chunk and the video would probably be like an hour long. And then I did notice this tote on the floor filled with like vintage trucker caps from like the 70s and 80s. I don't know what was happening with this. <laughs> um... So I did end up looking through like all of these and this is what we found for John's dad. We found uh, one in there that's like perfect for him and he would sometimes wear these hats like fairly recently. So I was like, oh, this is perfect and it's Father's Day soon so you can send it to him. So I don't think I end up showing the one that we found for him, but it was cool to look through all of them. I was hoping that I was going to find one. They're mostly just businesses within like the province we live in. So I was hoping to find one like from my hometown and I, I would have bought that. I think they were $10 each. I really liked that uh, mid-century desk there. I had some really old speakers on top of it. I really liked this swag lamp as well. And I thought these snack trays were really, really cute. And then I noticed some old radios or clocks, clock radios, um, which I thought were really cool. One in particular, this one by General Electric, this looked pretty old. It says that it works. This is the only thing that I was really like borderline considering getting. I didn't end up getting it, but I, I don't know if it's still there. When I go there the next time, I might get it. I think it would be perfect on top of our TV our vintage TV in our living room because there's no clock like on our TV because it's from the 19 like 80s um so yeah and if you've been around for a long time you'll know that I used to have that alarm clock there which I thought was really funny because my boss gave it to me for free because the alarm part didn't work but the clock part still did work but they have it for sale, I think, for like 30 some dollars. So I thought it was funny that I had it for free. It worked for a few years and then it just stopped working. But this one here, I love. This screams like 1960s bedside table vibes. Then in this middle section, I noticed this um, vintage record player stand with room for records. And then 
I didn't notice at the time, but there's this bowling lamp. I do notice it once I get to the other side, but it's so fabulous. So 1960s. And then John was looking at these um, really old typewriters, but I noticed that the circle bar cart that they were on, which I really, really loved a lot. Um, and then I noticed they had this entire gigantic section of lighting and lighting fixtures, which is so cool. I feel like when we um, are doing like renovations and stuff that if we need like well not if we need I want to get vintage fixtures so and then I also noticed a whole bunch hanging from the ceiling that I hadn't noticed prior to that um but I really liked that swag lamp as well but when we are in need of vintage fixtures is what I was trying to say I'll probably come back here and see what we can find I loved this lamp. I didn't realize, but it's made from mercury glass, so that's why it's so expensive. I thought it was going to be like maybe like $40 or $50, but I loved the shade on it and the base, but the shade is what drew me to it originally. But I definitely think they had a lot of fabulous like lighting um, fixture covers, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They also had a ton of shades, which were so great. I loved these ones with the kind of fringe around. So, so, like, my style. I'm definitely coming back here for my lighting needs in the future. Um, this other smaller shade is so my style too. I think it's from the 1960s, but I loved it. It's like very long and it's the kind that just clips on top of your bulb. So I really like that. So many fabulous lamps over here. <laughs> I was like, I was in heaven in this whole lighting section. I actually spent like a lot of time over here, even more than I filmed. And then I also noticed another um, kind of hanging lamp there that I really liked. It had a very interesting lighting thing. I don't know if that's like a special bulb or what. This might be the most like vintage lighting I've ever seen in one place in all of my years of thrifting. I really liked this lamp too. I thought it was such a unique shape, but I did notice that it obviously had gotten a little too hot next to the bulb or something at some point. Then they had some children's toys and some vintage board games over in this little section here on this like hutch, I guess you'd call it. Um, we had, we saw one of these at the antique flea market recently and they had another one there that was made from plastic. Some, they had this Elvis clock, which I don't think that's vintage. I feel like that's like nineties or something. Stuff like that I feel like was really popular in the nineties. I saw these little, what they almost look like trophies, like the bases, but they're just paperweights. Um, I love the peanuts. So I think they're from 1950, yeah, 1958. So there's one with Snoopy and the other one had Linus. I thought they were cute. I think this is German writing, but I was asking John if he thought this was like the game Battleship, but just in another language, um, but we're not sure. And then they did have some other um, vintage board games, which 
we have a pretty substantial collection of. I filmed a video on that um, a few months ago now. So we're generally not looking for new ones to add, but every now and then we do see one that we want to add, but today was not that day. I did notice these like building blocks. This looks really old. And here it is, the bowling lamp. <laughs> I love this so much. I didn't notice from the other side, but I feel like this would be perfect in like a 1960s or 50s, I guess, like basement kind of den area. We definitely don't have room or need for it, I don't think. But and I noticed this mirror with piano keys around it. I don't feel like that was that old though, maybe, but it looks like almost like something somebody made themselves but the bowling lamp was everything. <laughs> we went back downstairs and I didn't notice at the time but um they have one of those little toy sewing machines like that um a few months ago I filmed a tour of a thrift store and there was one in there still new in the box um so then while we were checking out um she said they had another barn that was filled with furniture if we wanted to look in it so I figured I would just we'd take a quick little sweep through and I would film whatever was in there they definitely had some cool um vintage pieces in here as well two specifically that I would love to have but they were both in bad shape so they'd have to be like redone but um they did have some like this cabinet was beautiful um and they had this um I guess I don't know if it's actually made of iron but like it's sort of meant to look that way vanity set and then yeah this cabinet was incredible And they had this cabinet too, which was also beautiful. It almost looked like it could go with the other one. And then I spotted it, and so I ran over this vintage stool. It actually didn't have a step stool part. It was just the stool, but it was from the 60s, which I love this so much. But as you can see, it was not in the greatest of shape, so it would definitely have to be redone. And then we noticed this um, map desk in behind that... This is a desk that John actually used to have a long time ago, but we just didn't have room for it. So we got rid of it, but we, we see it periodically and we always think about it. But yeah, this stool was great. I would love, love to have one of those for my kitchen, but I don't really like, I don't know how much it is to get something reupholstered like that. And I don't know. A lot of times I do see them when they have been reupholstered, but they're usually in like the blue color or the retro red. So neither one of those would work in my kitchen. We saw this dresser that we liked. We used to have one really similar to this, but we actually like flipped it, sold it. I saw this wicker furniture and I immediately thought of Grey Gardens. Ugh. I love that so much, um, that movie. I was recently just watching like a tour of Grey Gardens like from the person who re like who bought it and restored it and she had all of the original wicker furniture. So that's what I was thinking about when I was seeing this. One was a rocker, which I thought was cool. Um, I would love to have like a nice wicker set. I spotted this vintage oval coffee table under here, which I love. This is very much my style. There was It was hard to really get a good look at everything because everything was so piled up because there was so much stuff in here. But I loved this teak cabinet as well. Very nice.
And I noticed some of those vintage lawn chairs that I love. I think they're from like the 70s and 80s. We actually did find a few last year, so we already have some. But then it felt like we shouldn't keep going. Almost like I didn't really show it, but it looked like there was stuff that wasn't for sale there. So we decided to turn around. And then I noticed this piece, which I would also love to have. This telephone stand. My grandma had one of these in her house when I was growing up, so it gives me all of the feels. And then John pointed out, oh, there's a lamp attached to it, which I think is even cooler. As you can see, though, it was in pretty rough shape. This is a, a unique enough piece, though, that I don't know. I think if I could get it reupholstered, I probably would buy it. I just love that the lamp is there, too. I just think it's cool. My vintage phone that I have would look so good on it, too. But anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I have to say I'm getting really into going to antique stores. Previously, I wasn't that into it because I'm just more excited about finding vintage things for cheap at a thrift store. But it is actually really fun to look. So I'm planning on going to more. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.